Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're so excited to have you all here for today's session called CK12 Simulations and Plix Interactives. We're coming to you live from the CK12 offices in Palo Alto, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm Katie H., a member of the CK12 team, and I will be moderating today's webinar, which will be run by Katie S. and Sonia. So a reminder that you can join us for the Certified Educator Program. This is part of that program. There is a matching assignment for that session, and it can be found in the CEP Flexbook. Please be sure to preview any questions for that assignment and make, set your sure to, make sure you are set to answer them, as you will need to work your way through the assignment in one sitting once you click Start Quiz. So like our other sessions, we encourage you to use the chat window in Zoom to connect with others. Make sure to select all panelists and attendees. It sounds like we're getting some good chat conversation. Someone's going there to pick up their son. Um, there's some awesome conversation just started there. So go ahead and kind of get that in there. Just stay safe, make sure someone else is driving. Um, and please continue to build that community. If you have questions for our team, please feel free to use the Q&A window. That will help us track that and make sure we get to all of your questions. We also have a handy resource page for this webinar session. You can find it at the tiny URL listed on the screen, ck12.org slash plicksims2019, um, or simsplix, either one should get you to where you need to go. So go ahead and use that, print it out for today's session um, as a reference for a later date, all of the rest of that. For now, I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Katie S., who's gonna tell you about our Plix Interactives. Thanks, KDH, and thank you to everyone who joined us today for today's session on CK12 simulations and Plix interactives. Today, we're going to highlight three different types of interactives. We will scale up from the manipulatives found throughout our latest Flexbooks, Flexbooks 2.0, to the diverse Plix to the full portal simulations. The interactives in Flexbooks 2.0 allow students to actively experiment with concepts within the course itself. We will highlight science and math PLIX, which stands for Play, Learn, Interact, Explore. This tool allows users to animate ideas through simple interactions. Also, we will be discussing our science simulations, which enable learners to discover the scientific principles that govern a real world setting in a fun and interactive way. Before we get into the core content of the webinar, we would like to find out a little bit more about your familiarity with these interactives. You'll see a poll here in a few seconds that will prompt you to respond to a question. So here's the question. How familiar are you with CK12 simulations and Plix interactives? You can select all answer choices that apply. I am new to them. I use Plix occasionally. I use simulations occasionally. I use Plix frequently. I use simulations frequently. I'll pause for a few seconds to let you finish answering this poll. Remember, please select all that apply to you. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. So it looks like a lot of you are new to our interactives. And some of you use Plix and simulations occasionally. All right, so this is a great time for us to tell you all about them. Now let's move on and discuss interactives. In this first section of the webinar, I'll discuss new features in CK12's Interactive Flexbooks 2.0. Next, we'll talk about Plix interactives and Plix Corner. Our goal is to get you ready to try interactives in your class. CK12 recently released Interactive Flexbooks 2.0, which are filled with interactives. This is a section from the newly released eighth grade math course. Students can read through the text, look at pictures, and manipulate graphs, figures, tables, and equations. The interactives are often paired with sets of inline questions. The students can answer to guide their learning and get immediate feedback. The courses even have full screen interactives like clicks and simulations. In this course, the interactives are designed to be an integral part of the lesson, not just supplementary. This is cutting edge online educational technology. Interactive Flexbooks 
are online courses that are populated with digital manipulatives and Plix interactives, which we'll go into in depth later in this webinar. We currently have eighth grade Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Physics interactive courses up on the site. Each curriculum is rigorous and the math courses are fully aligned with Common Core State Standards. Like everything at CK12, the courses are free. To find the courses, just click Explore at the top of the CK12 homepage. When the drop-down menu appears, find the Flexbooks 2.0 option. Further down the menu, menu, you'll also see a link to the Plix browse page. Sonia will show you more about this later. An information page about Flexbooks 2.0 appears. From here, you could either scroll down or click the Get Started button when the page loads. The link takes you to a web page with the URL flexbooks.ck12.org. The functionality of the interactives are tightly integrated with each course. For example, this interactive is designed for a lesson on comparing function types, linear, exponential, quadratic, and rational. The lessons in the interactive Flexbooks are also full of real-world applications and plics. Plics are similar to the embedded interactives that we just looked at, except plics can be accessed outside of the course. Plics have more features, and they cover a wide breadth of math and science concepts. You can learn more about the interactive Flexbooks by joining another webinar, Common Core Math, on CK12 on Thursday, July 18th at 9 a.m. Now, let's check out PLIX. PLIX stands for Play, Learn, Interact, Explore. It's a visual learning modality that allows users to animate ideas in a concept through simple interactions. We have over 1,140 interactives that span both math and science concepts and can be filtered by subject, keyword, concept, or standards. Also PLIX, like everything offered by CK12 is free to all users. All you have to do is sign into CK12 to access them. So after you've opened up a Plix, the first thing you do is read the description on the left. The description explains what the interactive is about and provides directions on how to interact with it. Next, use the interactive by following the prompt and the instructions. In the interactive, you can explore the concept. If you need to start over, there's a refresh button at the bottom you can use. After you've used the interactive, click the challenge button below the description. This opens up the challenge questions. The questions often build upon one another to help students reach a deeper understanding of a concept. The final question is a discussion question that you can use for a class conversation. This is a great place to think about differentiating learning by having students try the first few questions or work their way through to the higher level thinking and discussion questions. As a side note, don't worry about trying to write down all the teaching strategies we mentioned. A full list was posted earlier in the chat window and we'll also send it as a follow-up to this webinar. Along the toolbar at the top of the Plix, you'll see that there are even more features. We'll discuss more of these features as we go. And now let's dive into a Plix. This Plix is about lunar phases. The description of this Plix includes a prompt on how to interact with it. Notice that it says to drag the red point. Moving the red point changes the phases of the moon in accordance with the labels on the slider. At the top right of this Plix is an orange button to assign to class. You can assign Plix to students in a CK12 class group by clicking on that button. If you wanna learn more about assignments, feel free to ask us in the Q&A window. Let's look at another Plix for a second. Before we explore the Plix itself, you can see in the top right the options to give feedback and adjust the size of text by clicking the icons in the upper right corner of the screen. You'll notice that this Plix about rules for dilation has the same description and prompt area, the simple interaction and challenge questions. This Plix uses two of the most frequently seen question types, multiple choice and select all that apply. If students are struggling with a question, they can often find hints to help answer the questions. Note that if you get an answer wrong, you'll see the option to show the correct answer. Once again, this is a learning, not an assessment tool. 
so students will be able to get immediate feedback and guidance when they attempt a question. Students can also use the learn more option to read about the matching concept and gain a better understanding of it. There's our learn more pop up. Encouraging students who are struggling to access these resources is another great way to personalize and support student learning. So now that you've seen two clicks, you may be wondering where you can get your hands on them. You can use the search bar to find content and modalities, including clicks. You can also access clicks through the circular clicks icon on the home page. You can even get to clicks from within Flexbooks 2.0. For example, let's look at the geometry book. Open the book from the browse page, scroll through the table of contents and open up a lesson. There we go. The start button would open up the written lesson. Below that is listed other ways to learn. The first two modalities are clicks. I can tell because the little brain icon next to the title indicates that they're clicks. Lessons with clicks and simulations are often listed among the first modalities. You can access our clicks through the website on any computer or tablet with a screen size of nine inches or larger. Or if you're accessing them via Flexbooks 2.0, you can use them on your, your phone as well. Alternatively, you can jump directly to the Plix browse page using www.ck12.org slash Let's see what that looks like. Once on the browse page, you have a few options. Remember to sign in if you haven't, and then you can choose your branches. Those are your subjects. They will help filter your clicks according to the areas you're teaching. If you've done this and you wanna update those branches, you can click on change branches. In addition to searching on the main site, you could search within the clicks browse page. Here you could search for a title, concept, or even CCSS or NGSS standard. You can find clicks in all branches of math and science. To achieve this depth of coverage, we've developed some really diverse clicks. Some clicks are exploratory based, while others check for student understanding. Some clicks are abstract, and others are based in the real world. We're going to dive into a few examples. You can also share your idea for Plix with the Interactives team by clicking the link above the search bar. So far, we've looked at embedded interactives and full Plix. I'm now gonna show you how to embed interactives into your own lesson. I've got a draft of a lesson ready here to embed both a basic Plix, which is only the interactive part, as well as a complete Plix, which is a full Plix that opens into a Plix screen. First, I'll quickly go through the full process. Afterwards, we can review the specific buttons to press. So, on the Plix, click the three dots at the top and go to embed. Copy the basic Plix code by pressing the orange button. I'm gonna use the add, insert, edit media button and paste my code. I can preview it and press insert. Now for the full Plix. I can use the code below and copy it over. I press the same add insert edit media button. I can preview this too. A complete Plix includes a launch button. Next, to insert it and keep the lesson as a draft to save the whole thing. Let's see what it looks like as a finished lesson. And here's my basic embedded interactive. Press try it and review the text. You could play around with it right in the lesson. Here's the full Plix. When you press the launch button, it takes you to the full click screen. Once again, it's the same interactive, but it comes with five questions and more features. So we went through that pretty quickly. Let's do a re quick recap. So those three buttons at the top of the clicks are what you press to get to the drop down menu with the embed button. There's our embed button. Press the embed button to get the clicks codes. On the draft of your lesson, press the insert edit media button to add the code and embed interactives into your lesson. Okay, now let's look at the variety of clicks available to you. These exploration-based clicks are sandboxes in which a student can play around and experiment with an idea. In the distance between two points, taxicab distance clicks, 
students explore two different ways to find the distance between two locations. In the Ohm's Law Plex, students explore how Ohm's Law affects the current in a circuit. A great teaching strategy would be to have students explore Plex and then share their different experiences and what they learned with each other. In some plicks like these, students can get feedback to check their understanding of a concept. The structure of water plicks allows students to rotate water molecules to form hydrogen bonds. In the law of cosines plicks, students find the missing side lengths of triangles using law of cosines. These plicks can be used as a review of a concept so, so students can see how well they understand a concept before an assessment. In many plicks, students can manipulate graphs, diagrams, or variables. In this sine and cosine plic, students can explore how the values of trig functions relate to a given angle. In the refraction band gap plics, students change the band gap of a substance to see if a photon can fit through. As a lesson, you could have students screenshot a few different states for a graph or set of variables and explain what changed and how the change affected the graph or situation. Some plics use real world contexts to teach math and science concepts. In the rainforest map quest plics, students can locate villages on a map using a scale. In the rate of dissolving sugar plics, students observe what happens to a sugar, sugar cube in T as the temperature changes. For these real world plics, try having students brainstorm other applications of a particular concept or even design their own plics to address a concept. So as you've seen throughout these plics, there are a number of different ways to have students work with and use plics. In class, as a warm up, as enrichment, as a remedial activity, or to explore a concept. At home, as a homework assignment, or students can post answers to plics questions on CK12. To differentiate instruction, using challenge questions, learn more, and explorations. To foster conversation. The last question of each PLIX is a discussion question, and some lead to PLIX Corner. I've mentioned PLIX Corner a couple of times now, so let's talk about what it is and how to find it. The CK12 Cafe is a place where you can ask and answer questions and share with other users. Just click the link to Cafe in the Explore drop-down menu to get there. We're going to enter Plix Corner where users answer intriguing Plix discussion questions. Here's a great example of a recent discussion in the Plix Corner. The Plix Science Question of the Week was from the Temperature and Temperature Scales Plix. You can assign the Plix features in a Plix Corner post and have your students join this conversation and discuss their ideas with classmates and students across the world. One of the standards of mathematical practice is construct vi viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. The Plix Corner is a great place for students to discuss their reasoning about a topic. Each week, CK12 features one math Plix and one science Plix to ask questions of the week. We've been noticing more and more classes leaving answers to Plix questions in mass, sometimes with notes of encouragement from their teacher. If you'd like to see a specific Plix featured that you want your students to respond to in Plix Corner, let us know. On the next slide, I'll tell you how to get in touch with us. So I'd like to challenge you to get involved. Try out Plix and the interactive Flexbooks 2.0. Share interactives that you love with your students and other teachers. Tell us at CK12 what you think by reaching out to us at Facebook, Twitter, or share your idea for a Plix. Give it a shot. And have fun exploring our new interactives. Okay, so now I've told you a lot about Plix. Now it's your turn to find a Plix that you could use in your own classroom. Press escape to escape from the Zoom window, open up your internet browser, and go to ck12.org. 
For those of you staying on the Zoom window, you can watch me find clicks on the CK12 site. So, all right, here we are at the CK12 homepage. Time for your first challenge. Navigate from the CK12 homepage to the clicks browse page. So there's a few ways you can do this. You could either scroll down and press the Plix tile right here. You could search for a Plix and click on it, or I like to press explore, go to the menu and press the Plix button to take me to the Plix browse page. All right, if it's your first time on the Plix browse page, or if you've not signed into CK12, you'll be prompted with a tutorial on how to use Plix. Now, let's go back to the CK12 homepage, so ck12.org, and try to find the interactive Flexbooks. So here we go, second challenge, navigate from the CK12 homepage to the interactive Flexbooks browse page. Once again, I'm gonna use the explore menu, and right there, upper left, Flexbooks 2.0. And let's see, so you could either press the get started button here, or you could scroll down and learn about Flexbooks 2.0, and here they are, and you can open up any one of these. All right, and with that, Let's see, this might be a good time to stop and see what questions we have coming in about Plex and interactive Flexbooks. Before we move on to the second half of this webinar, where Sonia discusses simulations. So please join us back in your Zoom window to participate in the chat and Q&A. Thanks, Katie. Um, that was a great overview. I know some of that went a little bit fast, but hopefully you got an idea of what you were looking at. Um, we have a couple, I'm going to ask a couple quick questions and then go into, we had a bunch of different questions on embedding. Um, but let's start with the first one on this. It says, how would students create their own clicks? So are there options to create clicks or just recommend potential topics for us? Um, so right now we don't have a way for students to create their own clicks. But let me take you back to the Plix browse page. Actually, I'll open up a Plix right here. So we have um, the three dots where we went to go to embed. You can share your idea for a Plix and you could type it in and send it to us and we could build one out according to your custom designs. So we had a bunch of different questions in terms of embedding, like why, where would I want to embed the Plix? Um, maybe I can take that because a lot of that is covered in our advanced Plexbook session um, that we did yesterday um, and last week as well. So you can definitely check out the video on that piece. Um, the biggest thing about embedding that in our Flexbooks is that you can see, especially that basic Plix is super helpful because you could write your own questions that go with that. Um, you could kind of use the, our interactive pieces there or other multimedia that you embedded. Um, to really support student learning and go from there. Um, you can also take or embed codes and use them like in a class website or something like that if you wanted students to access those. But I really recommend using that assigned to class option if you wanna make sure that they go in and do that work um, or embed it directly within a Flexbook lesson that they're working off of. And that could be any lesson, whether that's our original books or our current 2.0 books, um, the embed codes will still work in there. They are optimized for kind of 2.0 environments. So I recommend pulling your content from 1.0 to 2.0 in there. Um, if they're embedded within a lesson, because I know we had some questions on grading, then um, you will not get a separate mark for those. If you assign those clicks separately, then you would get a separate kind of complete or incomplete score when they started working their way through the interactive questions. Um, they're not, it's not a assessment like our practices, it really is a learning tool. Um, so Katie, we have a question in here that asks about, it says, please expand on students posting responses to challenge questions as homework. So maybe you could talk a little bit more about that cafe.
Okay, so let me open up the cafe for you. So I'm gonna go back into explore and we can look at the cafe right here. And here's our Plix corner. It's the third tile in the cafe. And we have a number of these Plix here with links. You can open up the Plix from here. Students can type in their answers to a Plix question. Um, and the interesting thing is you can share a post with your class using that little share button and enter in their addresses. But if you notice, the more recent posts don't tend to have a lot of responses. Our older posts have a lot. And so it seems like what teachers are doing is you can assign to class and share it here uh, using either CK12 or Google Classroom. And then students will go through and oftentimes the very last question takes them to Plix Corner. And then we see hundreds of answers um, in older Plix that we've posted through that method. Thanks, Katie. Um, so it looks like at this point in time that we have cleared out our queue. We answered that last one that's in there. Um, so I think we're gonna, I'm gonna steal the screen back and we're gonna swap back over and have Sonia come on and talk about simulations. Um, and then we'll continue to answer questions on Plix throughout this time. And we will regroup and answer questions on Sims at the end. And then we always stay on and answer more whenever you guys have more questions. Um, so with this, I'm going to sign off and let Sonia take over. All right. Well, thank you, Katie and Katie. Um, Katie, yes, you did an awesome job. You're getting a lot of shout outs on the chat window. And thank you all at home for listening and tuning in today. Um, I'm really excited to show you all our CK12 interactive simulations, which we at CK12 lovingly refer to as Sims. We offer a large collection of over 120 physics and chemistry simulations that are all tablet and laptop friendly. Just one thing to note, um, the screen size should be about nine inches or larger. So if you're listening into this webinar and you happen to be looking on your smartphone to um, preview some of the simulations, they will not open on your smartphones. You'll need your tablets or laptops to get that larger screen. These really are a groundbreaking new type of digital learning tool, unlike anything else out there, in that they overlay scientific and mathematical principles onto a real world setting. These sims support inquiry based learning and promote students to connect the often abstract STEM concepts with their everyday applications. They are aligned to NGSS standards and are applicable to both middle and high school levels. They differ from the Plix interactives that KDS just went through in that they're almost like a portal pulling students into a real world setting, allowing them multiple ways to interact, connecting many concepts together. But like the Plix and all other resources at CK12, they are all free. So simply sign into CK12 and launch a sim with just one easy click. Now in this next half of the webinar, I'm going to show you how to navigate the Sims browse page, very similar to the Plix browse page, and then help to familiarize you with the general structure of the Sims. I will also highlight the many embedded Sim features and resources. I'm going to share some ideas I have for using the Sims as an instructional tool in class or at home to differentiate instruction and to dispel some common science misconceptions. I'm also excited to tell you about the Sims we now offer in different languages. The recently added embed codes that KDS kind of previewed in Plix. And I will end by going live to show you some of the Sims found in our science flexbooks on our new Flexbook 2.0 platform. So my main goal this afternoon, like Katie's, is that by the end of this webinar, you really feel excited and equipped to use CK12 simulations with your students. So my advice at this time is as I'm kind of showing you the Sims, pick one Sim and experiment with it. Think about using it in your class, even during that first week of school. 
Okay, so I'm going to start by sharing with you. This is an, um, an image. I used to be a classroom teacher, and this is an actual image taken of a whiteboard from my physics class a few years ago. So, you know, judgment aside, I spent my entire lunch period drawing this image the best I could do for my students with the materials I had, right? A whiteboard and a marker. Trying to relate the law of reflection with what they see in a mirror. Thankfully, CK12 has provided a much more compelling learning tool, and we teachers now have time to eat our lunch, right? Woo -woo. Okay, so this is the prom night sim, a result of the beautiful collaboration between science teachers, animators, and software developers at CK12. So the prom night sim here begins with an intriguing question, what size mirror do you need? to see your entire body and it advances through an introductory video explaining the basic concepts and posing further questions to get students to think about the underlying physics in this real world scenario, right? Getting ready for the prom. And, and here um, you can see there's, it says let's play around and then we'll lead you to the next scene which we call the sandbox. And we call it the sandbox because it's meant for users to play around and discover new things. So it's an interactive environment and you will find sliders for certain physical variables and graphs, or in this case, responsive animations to illustrate the relationship between these variables. The next scene, um, you are posed with three questions that can actually be answered by adjusting the sliders. So we call them slider-based questions. And each simulation ends with a set of real-world examples that invites the student to think about applications of the underlying concepts in different physical situations to promote continued learning. So hopefully after previewing this sim, you are really excited to see more. All right, so there are many ways to access the sims from within the CK12 website. So you can simply click on that explore option that Katie used a lot during her um, half of the webinar. And then you can click on simulations. Or you could scroll down the home page and click on the simulations icon on the bottom left corner. So each of these options will take you to our simulations browse page. So this web address, www.ck12.org forward slash sims, also provides a simple shortcut for you, your students, or colleagues to get to the sims browse page. So in our collection of over 120 sims, we have bobsleds, music recitals, swimming, archery, airplanes, and more. So they're all real world settings you can see here that are really hard to replicate in the classroom. So our collection of sims are currently divided into two branches physics and chemistry. And we are now looking at the physics tabs. You can see it highlighted there on the left. The first row features three of my favorite sims for topics commonly taught in a physics classroom around the beginning of the school year. So on the far left, we have the driverless car sim, and it poses the opening question, how does a self-driving car know where to go? And prompts students to practice vector addition in a fun way. Now in the middle there, we have the at the crossroads, and it can be used to teach conversions of systems of measurement. And then on the far right, we have Erwin and Ruthie, and this is actually one of my personal favorites. It allows students to adjust the velocity of two racing robots to learn all about motion and graphing motion. So like I said before, these really are all scenarios that are hard to replicate in the classroom. Although these sims are formally labeled physics, their topical coverage is broad, and we do have sims that relate to concepts regarding physical science, earth science, astronomy, and math. So I know I saw in the chat that we have all different teachers listening in today, even those um, at the elementary school level. So I just wanna say that even if you're not a physics teacher, 
I encourage you to visit the CK12 Sims Browse page, and I really am confident that you can find something for your course and level. Okay, and just to be sure to convince you, I'd like to highlight some other Sims that can even be used to teach some of those important math concepts. So on the left there, we have the portrait gallery sim, and this um, can also be used to teach vector addition and important concepts related to trigonometry. Both the water fountain sim and the archery sims have to do with projectile motion and involve parametric equations. And then on the bottom right, the stadium wave sim can be used for a more complicated sinusoid problem. So really, like I said earlier, although these sims are just labeled physics or chemistry, there really are many that can be used to highlight the real world applications connected to a variety of STEM concepts. Okay, so going back to the Sims Browse page, that second tab gives you access to recently released chemistry sims. Now these are still in what we call the beta stage of development. So you'll see the beginning of that full structure that you see in the physics sims. These chemistry sims all provide the microscopic explanations for macroscopic observations of the world around us. And I know that makes all you chemistry teachers out there smile because that is the goal, right? The first three you're looking at here on the far left is the going fishing sim which students can use to explore what makes an object float or sink. In the middle, we have the airbag sim, which allows students to investigate the chemical reactions that cause an airbag to inflate. And then on the far right, the hot pack cold pack sim, which provides a really great everyday model for students to associate with exothermic and endothermic reactions. So I hope that you'll explore and experiment with using these new sims in your classroom and also provide us with your feedback. There is a link within each sim and I'll show you that later when I hop on live and demo um, that says feedback and I do read it each week and we listen. So please let us know what you think and how it goes. So once on the browse page, there are many ways to find a sim for your particular class. So the simplest, you can just scroll down. You can type in keywords into that search bar that's highlighted, or you can sift through the filters. So you can filter all of our sims by concept or NGSS standards. So these concepts and standards are also listed under each sim. So you can see there in the light blue concept standards. In addition, there is a worksheet link under each sim. When you click on the worksheet arrow icon, a worksheet version of the sim will pop up that can be easily downloaded as a PDF. And there's also a way to access the worksheet from within the sim that I will also demonstrate later. So if I click on that little arrow, here's the worksheet that pops up. Now there are a variety of ways which um, these worksheets could be used. But I think it's most important to note that all of the embedded features and content in the sims are accessible in worksheet format here. So if internet is an issue at your school or you would like a handout that will help guide students in using the Sims or just simply if your students respond better to turning something in, I know mine did. These worksheet resources are currently available for all physics Sims and the Chem Sim worksheets will be coming down the road. Okay, so this slide um, provides some images of the four main windows found in our ramp and piano sim. And this sim is about force, distance, and work, and how this relationship can be manipulated with the ramp. So I actually used to begin my physics curriculum with investigating simple machines, and really think this is a great sim to introduce students to important concepts related to physics. Now, one of the most unique things about our simulations is this, this consistent structure. So, all 120 start with an introductory video, move into an interactive sandbox, provide some slider-based questions, and then end with other real-world examples. 
So I think what you'll find is that after using one or two of the simulations, your students will no longer have to focus their attention on how to use the digital tool. And we'll be able to focus on learning the concepts, which is much more important in my personal view. So let's start with that first um, part of the sim, the introductory video. This is a snapshot of the intro video of the hot oven sim, which enables students to explore the difference between heat, temperature, and thermal energy. So like all sim intro videos, the font size can be changed and you can play and pause the video at any time. And for repeat users of this sim, the video can also be skipped. So one idea I, I'd like to share with you is that I might project this question, right? What is the difference between temperature and heat um, when an overhead projector onto a screen in my classroom? And I would change the font to make it larger so everyone could see from their desk. And I would prompt students to complete a quick write as a warm-up activity. So I would ask students to put their pen to paper for three minutes, right, right when the bell rang, and write whatever comes to your mind in response to this question. So when the three minutes are up, I might press play, and we could walk through this introductory video as a class in discussion format. So this next slide shows um, the interactive sandbox environment of the Cliff Diver Sim. And this sim allows students to explore the acceleration due to gravity. So in every interactive sandbox, you'll, must, you'll almost always see one or two graphs at the top representing the situation, as well as sliders that allow you to manipulate the basic parameters and a play button. So um, here, each slider has an information tag that can be activated to learn more. The graphs also have many features activated by the gear symbol. So users can get info about the graph, zoom in to see the graph more clearly, hide the graphs, or compare two trials by clicking on enable last run. So you can see there, info, zoom, hide graph, enable last run. So another idea I have to share with you is I think it would be a really great exercise to again project this scene, this sandbox on a screen in class and I might hide those graphs, and I would pass out whiteboards, get my students in groups of four. I would set the sliders a certain way, and I would prompt students to sketch their predictions regarding what the graphs will look like on those whiteboards. Then very dramatically, I could press play, drop down the graphs, and re reveal the actual results. So I hope you try that one out in your class. Okay, so now um, the information bar at the top of every sandbox is really helpful and can be used to differentiate instruction for you and your students. So for students who are stuck or need more help, there is a tab labeled tutorial, which opens to a three minute YouTube screencast that carefully details how the simulation works made by yours truly. In addition, there's always a link available to concepts that highlight the relevant material, like the reads or videos, in the CK12 website. Now, for students who are up for a challenge, the Challenge Me questions provide a few related, deep thinking, open ended questions. So, what I want you to really think here with that toolbar at the top is that in this one interactive environment, students who are struggling are supported. Students who are ready to move on are challenged, and all students are prompted to be curious and have fun. Okay, so this is now a snapshot of the slider-based questions in the sprinter sim, and it allows students to explore friction by investigating why sprinters wear spike shoes for running. So the cool thing about these questions are that you receive immediate feedback on your submission and for all of us teachers, there is a way to create new slider-based questions. So highlighted there, it says create new questions. So you as the instructor can tailor the sim to your specific course or level. So here's kind of some ideas for the slider-based questions. I could envision prompting students to answer the slider-based questions in pairs during class. 
I could also see the completion of slider-based questions as a really great homework assignment. They are included in the SIM worksheet with sufficient space below each question to provide room for students to record their answers and reasoning. Okay, so um, this next slide here is a snapshot of the real world examples at the end of the gone fishing simulation about density and floating. So I think it would be fun to prompt students to do further research on one of these examples for homework and share their findings with their classmates the next class period. Now you can also customize the simulations by adding more real world examples. So that plus button there will allow you to do that. Another idea would be to prompt students to create their own example and upload it here adding to our bank of community contributed content. I actually introduced this idea during a previous webinar and I'm excited to announce that a few teachers did this. So as you can see highlighted there, if you click on community contributed content of the Gone Fishing Sim, you will see, let's go here. Over to the next one. So you'll see here the community contributed of the gone fishing sim. You will see that there are over 25 examples that are actually student generated. So I just think this is great and students would get a thrill out of seeing their work displayed like this. So I hope you will try that one out um, in those first few weeks of school. So speaking of real world applications, I believe our simulations serve as great resources for any NGSS curriculum. Here are some examples of sims with just awesome big questions. Journey to Mars, right? It says, why do, why do trips to Mars happen during certain launch windows? And the diamond cut, right? Why do diamonds sparkle? Uh, the touchscreen sim, how does a capacitive touchscreen work? And the wind turbine sim, how efficient is a wind turbine? So really the challenge of NGSS, um, I, I feel, is how to present the right phenomenon to elicit the right questions from students to meet those standards, right? And this is all done with the goal of sparking curiosity and allowing students to discover on their own. So I really think these sims can help you meet this challenge and can easily serve as phenomenon in your NGSS course. Okay, so um, this slide I wanted to share with you because in addition to connecting science to the real world, our sims can also be used to make the invisible visible and dispel some of those deep rooted science misconceptions. So this chart highlights some of the most common science misconceptions and a related sim that we hope you can use in your class to dispel it. There's just some great examples of misconceptions here. Um, one of them is, you know, one of my favorites, mass and weight are the same thing, right? And we have a sim called the astronaut training chamber, where it shows you how the mass on various planets stays the same, but the weight or that force due to gravity differs. And this sim even allows the student to explore the gravitational constant on Dione, one of Saturn's moons. It's one of Saturn's moons. It's pretty fun. So I'll actually show you. Um, the sim when we take a look at that interactive physics for high school flexbook coming up, flexbook 2.0 coming up. And we have included a PDF of this list for your future reference in your CEP flexbook under the um, simulation and Plix webinar session resources. So there is um, this chart for your future referral. Now we've had, had physics teachers around the world volunteer to help us translate our sims to Korean, German, Chinese, and most recently, Polish. These translated sims are now live on our site, and you can see the language drop-down arrow on the right corner there on the sims browse page. So there's also a help us translate link that you can use to provide us with your contact info if you're willing and able to help us translate the sims into additional languages. We really would be so grateful for any help you could offer. These translations are central in helping us achieve our mission of providing free, high quality physics resources to every student around the world. So I hope you'll consider helping us translate. 
Now, another cool feature that was released was that each SIM, just like the PLICs, have embed codes available for you to use. So very similar processes KDS um, really um, outlined in detail, but you click, you simply click on those three dots on the top right hand corner, and then you will see that embed option. And that opens to the window with the code that you can easily copy and paste anywhere you're able to embed an object, um, especially in our customizable flexbooks. So as Katie mentioned, um, CK12 recently released the Interactive Flexbooks 2.0, which are filled with our embedded interactives. And let's take a closer look at those now. Okay, so we currently offer six science flexbooks on our new 2.0 platform. And as you can see here, physics is really the only one with the official title Interactive Physics for High School because almost every lesson has an embedded SIM or PLIX interactive within the reading, as well as attached as related modalities. And our team is currently working hard on continuing to embed the SIMs and PLIX in the other science flexbooks, such as chemistry and physical science, as well as developing new interactives for these resources with the goal of making them really exploratory digital textbooks. So at this time, I'll probably hop on the website and show you um, some of these books. And as I'm demoing these books, please continue to post your questions in the Q&A window, and then Katie will prompt me to answer them as I go along. Um, does that sound okay, Katie, at this time to do that? Yeah, sounds great. Okay. Thanks. Um, while she's switching over, maybe I will kind of answer a couple of these pieces sure. that are general content-based stuff. So we had a bunch of questions about biology and math content for Sims. Um, right now, our content is physics and chemistry. Um, we're working our way through chemistry. So when we finish that, we'll look at next options. But I definitely recommend checking out our Plix interactives because those cover a wider set of resources. Um, but just kind of keep that in mind as you're going through. So go ahead, Sonia, take over, and we'll go from there. Okay, wonderful, thank you, Katie. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of take you through that same flow that KDS um, followed to the browse page. So I'm gonna hit explore here, and then I'm gonna hit simulations, which is right above the PLIX to get to that Sims browse page. And that's to show you um, that piece. And then also I'll go back to our homepage and we'll focus now on those Flexbooks 2.0, so explore, and then um, Flexbooks 2.0. And here I'm gonna hit um, get started and it will take us to those six science flexbooks that I just highlighted. So why don't we take a look at the physical science book to start. So here um, I'm gonna just scroll down and maybe we'll check out lucky number 13, work in machines. And I'll go down to the lever lesson 13.10 because like I said in um, in my class I started with fit, um, simple machines as a way to kind of kick off the beginning of the school year and so here you'll see kind of um, the start which will get us started on the reading and then you'll see um, the seesaw sim the lever clicks a few videos and an RWA under other ways to learn so this is what we refer to as related modalities so they are um, tagged there as well. But if we just simply hit start, we will um, open to a reading where it usually poses a question and then has some great pictures. This particular read has really cool demonstration YouTube videos embedded with that goal of just having a really neat, engaging digital textbook experience. A nice chart. And then you'll see if I scroll down, um, there's like a little prompt, launch the simulation below to further explore how a seesaw functions as a first class lever. So here I can, the big question is posed, can Sarah lift her mother on a seesaw? And I can launch that simulation from right within the reading. And you'll see that intro video, the sandbox, the sliders, responsive animations, as well as responsive graphs. And I can even, this one, you can even interact with the graph and then have the animations respond. And then slider-based questions, the real world um, examples, 
here, if I click on the very top right, that worksheet will pop up that I mentioned that has all the components of the sim. And then here's the cool part. If I click on the four arrows at the top right corner, I am popped right back, dropped right back into my reading and I have not lost my place. So say goodbye to like multiple clicks and losing 20 minutes of your class time just getting the students to the interactive. It's all right here in one place. And then let me just scroll down and show you also in the same reading there is a Plex with those same features of being able to launch and then be placed right back into the reading um, after interacting with the Plex. So um, there's that. And then as most of you have probably attended the Flexbook sessions on the, the little grid on the top, I can hit um, related content. And I also have access to the Seesaw Sim, that's a mouthful, and the Lever Plix, and then as well as videos and real world application articles here on the, on the right. So Katie, if, is there any questions you'd like me to answer? Or maybe we want yeah, to wrap up? Yeah, sure. Okay. We'll, we'll do that. And I don't know if you have one other one that you wanted to show us at all as well okay. as we go through. Um, so if you want to pull that one up, you're welcome to. Okay. We have a couple questions about assignments. So why don't I just talk about that for okay, a second? Um, okay. This has to do with reporting on students, what they answer correctly. How does that work? So we covered this in depth in our assignment sessions, um, but for Plix and Sims, you get credit or no credit. There's not any specific reporting that comes out of that. Um, I would recommend that if you were trying to get something more, you maybe use those worksheets to get some written text um, from students, have them post in the forum for a Plix question. Um, so there are other options, but assigning that Plix or Sim just gives you a complete or incomplete score as of today. Um, so it's not gonna give you kind of more than that. And along the line with that, if you assign a Flexbook lesson that has a SIM included in it, you're assigning the lesson, you would need to um, assign that simulation or Plix separately if you wanted a separate score for that particular piece. Um, so I'll give Sonia a minute to maybe go okay. through one other piece and then we'll wrap up with a couple things and stay on and answer any more questions. Okay, thanks Katie. All right, so um, I'm gonna just demo of the, of phys the Physics Flexbook 2.0 because like I said right now, that one is truly interactive with every lesson having a similar Plix embedded. So here I am, CK12 homepage. I'm gonna take a different path and just click on Physics. And with that pops up that Flexbook 2.0 um, platform with our physics content. And here, just to demonstrate, I'm gonna have some fun and go to chapter five, circular motion and gravity. And then let's stick with something tried and true across the universe, right? Newton's universal law of gravity. So I'll click on that. And again, hopefully you're familiar now with the general CK12 structure that you can start the read with everything embedded or you can get each piece um, on its own. There's my guy Derek Mueller from Veritasium and um, Bozeman Science videos and then our two sims and an RWA. So a lot of great content to support the reading. Um, so I'm going to hit start and here um, we go through our lovely law of universal, universal law of gravity and, um, and then a little blurb about this sim and it kind of prompts students to observe how this law unites the motion of objects on earth with the motion of all objects through our universe which is just like an awesome prompt and the big question what did isaac newton see in the falling apple right now this one um, particularly just goes very nicely with an ngss curriculum because this is kind of one of those main um, DCIs. Um, and so here we can see Isaac Newton sitting under the apple tree and looking at the moon, how it's orbiting the earth and looking at an apple falling to the ground. And then we'll um, kind of hop into the sandbox where we can adjust the sliders um, for distance to the apple, distance to the moon, and we see those graphs of the inverse square law, and you can have some really nice questions or discussions with your students about, um, about how you know, an inverse square law plays out and how if you double the distance, right, um, how that affects the force and so on and so forth. 
So um, that is awesome. a really nice thing. Thanks. I'm going to go back and share. We're going to do a, just a minute of wrap up and then we'll stay on and we have a couple of questions I know that are still coming in. Um, so a lot of you guys have seen our Plix and Sims throughout this presentation. Clearly we talked about Flexbooks a bit. Um, if you want to see an overview of all of our resources, we recommend you go to ck12.org slash overview and then kind of scroll down and that'll explore a lot more pieces. There's information about the cafe there. There's information about assignments and learning management systems. So all sorts of options as you go through. Um, we do have two recommended sessions. Um, these are both occurring tomorrow as well. So I recommend joining us for those if you haven't. One is on teaching strategies for using CK12. So that'll kind of expand upon what Katie and Sonia were talking about. Um, and then also our Common Core Math on CK12 gets a deeper look specifically into those um, resources, whether or not you want Common Core or just really amazing interactive um, Flexbook courses. And then we have one last case study. These have been super awesome discussions with our um, panelists, our CEs and other educators from across um, the country and beyond, I believe. So definitely join us for that last one if you teach in an independent school and wanna kind of talk to teachers who have used CK12 within there. So uh, there is a tiny URL for that resource page, a tiny URL for our feedback form and assignment that goes with all this stuff. All of that is in our CEP Flexbook, so you can just go there and find that piece. And with that, I'm gonna say thanks and kind of wrap this piece up, but I'm gonna start by answering one of these questions and then we'll see kind of as we go through what other questions come in, but we will stay on as long as needed to answer any other ones. So the question that's currently in the queue says, can you embed a Google form after the SIM to collect answers? So uh, yes, you, you can embed content using our multimedia option. Um, I might even recommend that you embed, um, like if you need those answers, that would be an option. If you just want the student to kind of answer specific questions within that piece, you could use that option to add your own questions within the simulation, or you could use kind of the inline question option, which I know we talk about a little bit um, more in our customizing practice session, and um, it'll be shown in the Common Core Math one because we have those questions there already. So all sorts of options, but um, especially if you make that Google form with your content in it, you're welcome to kind of use that in multimedia embed code option. And then, it says, where can you show where all the tiny URL links are? So my recommendation for you is that you go to our CEP Flexbook. So if I go back uh, just one slide from here, um, this is the tiny URL for our feedback. This is the tiny URL for our clicks, but they're all in that CEP Flexbook. So if you're not in our class yet, you're not in um, the accessing that Flexbook, we highly recommend that you do so. Um, and it looks like there's one last question in here. It says the Chem 2.0 book is being updated for Plix and Sims. Um, kind of like when would you update or not update? So the short version is if you change the scope and sequence, um, then you can have the um, general kind of lesson updates that happen within that would get you'd get a notification, but if you start editing that content, we never want to overwrite anything that you did yourselves. Um, so you would need to check back and kind of see like, oh, cool, what's happened since then? Um, but in general, if you're just changing that scope and sequence, you'll get notifications. If you start changing the content, it separates it from there. And we have one last question here. It says, is everything under other ways to learn included in the 2.0 lesson? Um, yeah, so all those other ways to learn are your related modalities. So we showed you guys some of those related modalities um, and those ones are available. If you expand the grid in the top right and click on related, you'll be able to see those as related. Some of them are also embedded, but in general, um, we're going from there. And it looks like we have an integrated science. We have not built an integrated science book specifically, but you're welcome to pull from our earth science and life science and chemistry and physics and create your own book by simply adding those two to a flex book. If you're interested in combining flex books, uh, I would check out our advanced flex book session. I combined content from an algebra two book and a pre-calc book, a section on finance, and that process would work the same way um, if you wanted to do that for integrated science. So I think with that, we have made it through this particular piece. We're gonna, once again, I'll just pop this final screen up, jumpstart at ck12.org if you have other questions, but we're gonna sign off for today. So thanks so much and have a good one.